Hi and welcome to part one of a video series on the Rampran Unikernel. This first part is a tutorial intended for people who have maybe heard about Unikernels or Rampran and are sort of interested in trying them out but so far have been not able to get their feet wet because they think water is scary. And we'll show you how to go from zero to Unikernel in just a few minutes with a few simple commands on pretty much any system, so it's really easy. As the demonstration application will use MPEG-1 through 3, yes, that's the audio player. It's not something you often hear mentioned in a unikernel context, and definitely this particular application is not applicable for the cloud, but first of all, it makes a cooler demo than running some crummy server somewhere, and second of all, there is an actual production motivation for it, which if this doesn't run too long, I can talk a bit about at the end. So in the interest of keeping this video short, I'll just start typing the commands and uh, once we have to wait for the computer, I'll talk a bit more. If you want to repeat this experiment, you don't actually have to take notes. You just go to wiki.rumpkernel.org and look at some of the tutorials, I mean. These commands are pretty much the same whether you want to run MPEG-1, 2, 3 on QMU or you want to uh, run PHP on Zen or whatever you want to do. So it's only in the end when you choose and bundle your application and run your application then where, where things start to get different. Okay, so let's create demo directory and uh, clone your friendly neighborhood unikernel repository this is pretty quick because it uh, it's just the front end for the underlying rump kernel components which we update here so this this will take a short while to fetch all the sources necessary for building rump kernels on top of which the rump rump run unikernel rests so yeah so this first part of the video series is going to be a Quick tutorial, I'll just run through the commands, I won't pause too much to explain them. And uh, hopefully in the end you'll see that this actually works and uh, will be motivated to try the tutorial for yourself. I mean the tutorial on the wiki. Uh, in the second part I'll probably go a bit more into detail on the commands we use today. You'll see that many of them print that they're experimental and what that means is that we just haven't decided if the usage will remain backward compatible for all eternity and actually in a few cases we already know that it will change but we just haven't figured out the best simplest possible way to implement those those features so simplicity is very hard then maybe in the third part I'll do something like uh, internals or let's see what this amounts to okay so now we have everything checked out we uh, we need to build something which uh, which means running this command like this this will build a setup which works on hardware which means QM and KVM whatever whatever if you want to build one which works for Zen you need to use this but we're building on hardware by the way if you're on OS X you need to uh, do something like this there's a how to about that on the wiki okay so I'll start the build and uh, since the build takes a few minutes on my system I'll pause the recording and we'll come back when the build has finished okay the build finished and we're back so a few things to note from this finished build screen the first one is the tool chain tuple which is pretty much the standard uh, tuple you use when when you have a cross compiler we'll need this information later this is based on which compiler we use to target the Rampran unikernel and then the other thing is that everything is installed into a installation directory which 
if we look into well it contains a bunch of stuff and then it contains a bin directory where actually the tool chain is so to make things easier we'll uh, put that into path uh, try to type it correctly and uh, let's see if we were successful yes so okay so now we have our tool chain in path and uh, essentially we've built what would in classic terms be the operating system and the compiler for it so now we need applications where do we get mpeg123 from well typically you use the, you'd use a packaging system and luckily magically one will appear Ooh, cool some screen corruption so ever since i last updated ubuntu that kind of stuff has been happening but since it bothers me less than the uh, crashes which happened with some other version i haven't bothered updating too much okay anyway so if you see further screen corruption blame ubuntu uh, uh, yeah so we cloned the packaging system from here and uh, one thing we need to do to the packaging system is tell which architecture we're compiling from for see rumper and unikernels are always cross compiled they're never compiled natively because we don't run the compiler on the unikernel so we have to do it on the host so we have to tell the system okay you want to build for this architecture and that's why you have to edit this uh, config file when you clone the first time to tell 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 it which which architecture you're building for uh, yeah so this is the tuple which i mentioned earlier which was printed as part of the end game message from uh, from the build script okay so then we go into the mpeg123 directory and you'll note there's just a make file and a readme and this works like pretty much every other well not every other since this isn't every other but works like bsd packaging systems where you just type make and then it downloads downloads everything and and builds it so one thing you maybe noticed is that there are no patches and that's correct there are absolutely no patches required to build mpeg123 as a ramper on unikernel and this has been very very important to us because the moment you start requiring even minimal patches you know you start slipping down a bad slope now i'm not saying that no program will require patches of course when you pour things from one system to another you always some at some point or another start needing needing patches for your target system but what i am saying is that in the ideal case you need zero patches and i'd also argue that mpeg123 is already a fairly non-trivial real world software which just goes i think to show how how good a result we've gotten with or from our work okay so uh what happened is that uh we got mpeg123 built into bin slash mpeg123 now can we run it no we need to run something called rump run bake first where we essentially select the operating system bits for for the application and uh, it works like this and see it's experimental okay so now we have our binary built it's a bit big we can also not strip it but if we strip it it becomes a bit smaller it's still a bit big but you know it has a whole bunch of drivers bundled into it and uh, for example it wouldn't need the scuzzy stack or or whatever so we could tune this down a bit but i mean let's not one meg four megs let's not care about that too much today okay so to run it we use a tool called rump run and uh this is really something or, or this tool is something we'll replace replace eventually 
because it turned out to be a bit inconvenient. The idea was to abstract all the underlying platforms, QMUs and whatever, whatever. But as we started piling on platforms, we noticed that uh, that didn't quite work. And this became a bit inconvenient. But since this is still the official way to run things, I'll use it now. Okay, so we can run it either in, in QMU or if I type KVM, it would use KVM acceleration. I'll just use QMU just to demonstrate how lean the resulting unikernel is, even though uh, we don't have acceleration. I mean, how, how fast it is. Uh, yeah, so small i means interactive, it opens a console. Capital I means define an interface and this I won't really explain this syntax, but maybe you'll start to realize why we st still need to do a bit of work with the launching. Uh, then W is is the address uh, address for the interface. So uh, it's inet address static and uh, configure an address for it. Then we need to tell QMU that we want some sound hardware and. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think, did I forget anything? Well, I think we'll notice if I forgot, in, forgot anything. And then, uh, because it won't work. <laughs> and uh, then we just uh, run mpeg123 as normal. Now, obviously, I conveniently happen to have a web server running on my my host system, which, uh, which happens to have a demo.mp3 file on it. Uh, the other option besides using H or, or networking to fetch the mp3 from would be for example to make a file system image which con contains the mp3s and then pass that as an argument as a, as a block device to the to the qmu so it would be available from the guest that way okay uh yeah so before we run that we need to uh make sure we have uh, interface available okay so uh, let's run it and uh, connection refused of course because i entered the wrong address hmm, minor demo effect okay let's try again and now the interface isn't up <laughs> Not really having very much luck with this today. Okay, better. Uh, yeah, let me turn that. Uh, actually, let me let me uh, let me just boot it with serial console in KVM, so you get a better idea of uh, how fast it boots. Except now again, I need to raise the interface. Uh, I really don't know why. Uh, why Linux does this, but should figure it out someday how to make it not turn the interface down. Okay, so that was it. That's how fast it boots. So you notice a small delay, which is essentially launching QMU, and when the boot bootstrap message is started blurting out, then then you pretty much boot booted instantly. Okay, so let me turn up the volume a bit so you can hopefully hear this. At least I can hear it. So it's clearly even playing. Cool. Okay. So that's pretty much the demo. So uh, I don't know, maybe this ran a bit long already, but yeah, so let, let me just say a few words about the kind of production motivations for running MPEG 1, 2, 3 as a unikernel. So, <coughs> well, the history, or history for me at least, is that the first non non developer motivation I had for the rump run unikernel was uh, sorry for rump kernels rump run unikernel didn't exist back then for rump kernels back in uh, about 2008 was uh, isolating the kernel file system drivers out of the kernel because what does a file system driver do it interprets a file system image what is a file system image it's a very complicated file format and when you interpret a very complicated file format, there's a very good possibility that you did something wrong. And if someone constructs a malicious malicious image, then it's 
there's a very good chance that they'll be able to own the program which is interpreting that image so you pass that kind of image to the kernel so for example someone hands you a USB stick it's like a what that can't possibly be a good idea so you know that was my motivation back then and these days for example uh, the cubes OS folks are really extending this this kind of paradigm of isolating processing of untrusted inputs of complex input formats and for example if you check mpeg123 it has had its share of share of vulnerabilities now you could of course solve this problem by booting a full operating system in a virtual machine and uh, then doing the same thing but i guarantee you you won't get a full operating system to boot this quickly and you won't get it to consume these few resources so once you start using full operating systems for this kind of stuff instead of using just the bits which you need you start running into things like oh well maybe you use a bit more resources and cache things and then how many virtual machines do you cache and so forth and so forth so if you build the system correctly from ground up you get these these, these problems with caching etc resource consumption just simply disappear now of course I'm not suggesting that anyone types a 2-3 line ramp run launcher command every time they want to listen to an mp3 but I think that's fine because in my view ramp kernels and the ramp run unikernel they're still sort of a back-end technology and that's why we need systems like cubes and, and so forth which uh, figure out how to properly integrate integrate these backend technologies and make them actually usable, present them to the user in a usable way. Yeah, okay, so I guess this was the first part of my dynamically scaling trilogy and uh, hopefully I encourage you to try things out for yourself and I hope to see you or maybe I hope that you will hear me soon in part two, unless I skip directly to part three. <laughs>